Adar is a very, very important month because it brings into completion things. It actually brings in an end to things that need to end. There are certain things, there are certain thought patterns that we have, there are certain ways, perspectives that we have on life that are against us. Uh, they bring a curse to us. They bring fear to us. They bring anxiety to us. They keep us from growing or going forward. And Adar is a powerful month to confront the curse and to reverse it. Uh, the meaning is that you are going to be able to see by the Holy Spirit what needs to end absolutely this month. It may have been something that has gotten less and less and less in your life, but you still have a vestige or a trace of it. And the Spirit of God is saying, no more. Let this be the month where that curse is totally reversed and it leaves your life so you can celebrate the ending of that. Where we see this is in the book of Esther where her people, the Jewish people, had an, an edict or a decree set against them in the month of Nisan. And the, the decree was going to be uh, taken out or come into manifestation in the month of Adar. And the decree was that the Jewish nation there, uh, of which Queen Esther was presiding over, and she herself was a Jew, they would be exterminated. Well, by the grace of God, Queen Esther was in a position where she could stop that. Though the decree was not annulled, King Ahasuerus told the Jewish people that they could take up arms and they could fight anybody who would dare come against them in the month of Adar. When that process is happening, that's the time where we learn to stand and we learn to say, stop, I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to fall prey to that because that is no longer uh, has a place in my life. I break that curse over my life. I break that decree over my life. And I declare it will not come to pass in my life. Because the Lord meets every single need that I have through his riches and glory, through the kingdom of God. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 7. This will delineate for you what a curse is how a curse operates. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in and relies on mankind, making weak, faulty human flesh his strength. So let's just break that down right now. We allow a curse to light on us when we put our trust in our own abilities, when we put our trust in our own strength or the strength of other people, when we default to coming up with ways, ideas to get us out of circumstances, when we plan and we scheme, that is relying on the flesh. The scripture says, as a metaphor, going down to Egypt, going to the way the world operates instead of the way the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven operates. Now going on, it says, for he shall not see prosperity when it comes. That's pretty tragic. When you're moving in a curse, when you even have an opportunity to move out in the strength of the Lord or in the strength of the identity of who Christ says you are, you, you have an opportunity, prosperity has come, but you're going to be held back because you believe in the curse. The Lord is always wanting us to go forward. Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts and relies in the Lord and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. So this is the definition this is how you know that you're moving in blessing rather than curse because you have spiritual security no matter what happens. And this is why you have spiritual security, beloved, is because you've come to a place to believe the Lord, 
to trust the Lord and to rely on the Lord. Not relying on your own strength, not relying on your own analytical thinking, but relying on the Lord. Mm -hmm.